ಆತ್ಮೀಯ ಕೇಳುಗ್ರಿ ನೀವು ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀರಿ ಕೆಎಲ್ ಧ್ವನಿ ಬಿಬಿಬಿ ತೊಂಬತ್ತು ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಎಫ್ಎಂ ಸಮಾಜದ ಸಮೃದ್ಧಿಗಾಗಿ ಕೆಎಲ್ ಧ್ವನಿ ಕೇಳುಗ್ರೆ ಇದೊಂದು ಸಂತಸದ ಸುದ್ದಿ ನಮ್ಮ ದೇಶದ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆಯ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಭಾರತ ರತ್ನ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿ ಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರು ನಿನ್ನೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಶನಿವಾರದಂದು ಹುಬ್ಬಳ್ಳಿಯ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆಯ ಬಿವಿಬಿ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಲೇಜಿಗೆ ಆಗಮಿಸಿದ್ದರು ಬಿವಿಬಿ ತಾಂತ್ರಿಕ ಉದ್ಯಮಶೀಲತೆ ಕೇಂದ್ರದ ಕಟ್ಟಡದ ಶಿಲಾನ್ಯಾಸವನ್ನು ಮುಗಿಸಿದರು ನಂತರ ಬಿವಿಬಿ ಕಾಲೇಜು ಆವರಣದಲ್ಲಿರುವ ಬಯೋಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಸಭಾಂಗಣದಲ್ಲಿ ಭಾರತ ರತ್ನ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿ ಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರನ್ನ ಸನ್ಮಾನಿಸಲಾಯಿತು ಈ ಸನ್ಮಾನ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ಕುರಿತು ಕೇಳಿ ವರದಿ ಆರಂಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಬಿವಿಬಿ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಲೇಜಿನ ಪ್ರಾಂಶುಪಾಲರಾದ ಡಾ ಅಶೋಕ್ ಶೆಟ್ಟರ್ ಅವರು ನೂರು ವರ್ಷ ಇತಿಹಾಸ ಹೊಂದಿರುವ ಕೆಎಲ್ಇ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಗೆ ಇಂದು ಶುಭ ದಿನ ಎನ್ನುತ್ತಾ ಎಲ್ಲರನ್ನೂ ಸ್ವಾಗತಿಸಿದರು ನಂತರ ಮಂಗಳೂರು ವಿಶ್ವವಿದ್ಯಾನಿಲಯದ ವಿಶ್ರಾಂತ ಕುಲಪತಿಗಳಾದ ಎಂಐ ಸವದತ್ತಿ ಅವರು ಭಾರತ ರತ್ನ ಡಾ ಸಿ ಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರನ್ನ ಈ ರೀತಿ ಪರಿಚಯಿಸಿದರು physical chemistry and chemical physics just to exchange the words so he took me around for 2 hours and i was so much impressed i said he is an engineering institution where so much of research is being done not by technologists but by scientists and if you look back till almost 2000 almost all the research work that has come has come from science departments of iit not from the technology departments of iit and rao is a standing example of it and at that time my first introduction with him should suffice you his students describe him by the beautiful adverb i take to you i hope he doesn't mind if i repeat it slave driver in the sense he drives himself very hard he is terribly disciplined and he expects his students to be very disciplined very hard working nothing short of discipline and hard work satisfies him and his achievements hence afterwards that is from iit kanpur onwards i went on seeing from there he shifted to indian social science as director retired from there and then became you know the founder director of the jawaharlal nehru center and built it up and in the process he accumulated so many things i shouldn't say accumulated people showered on him i was just trying to see you know what kind of a performance it is his present kind of recognition all over the world fellowships and academies 25 the countries involved starting from usa uk and then all of them 25 and take for instance the kind of indian organizations he has worked with very prominent they didn't take any prominent indian organization he has adorned but the present one said very very interesting for you and i he is the chairman of the prime minister's advisory council for science and technology and also he is the chairman of the indian group of science for government of karnataka in both the capacities he has been doing enormously good work for the upliftment of science and he has written books 45 books he has written and publications 1500 publications back back more than that we need like trying to describe the himalayas in in what direction can i describe the himalayas you look from one direction it looks different it looks from another direction it looks different and the very interesting thing i found was his latest book case on graphic some of you who are or many of you are technologists you know graphene is a very interesting subject in this sense it is a two dimensional solid imagine a two dimensional solid that is graphene that is his latest work and there itself he puts one more work a fantastically meaningful title climbing the limitless ladder that is i think more or less his biography if i am not mistaken because he is still climbing the limitless ladder He has climbed so many ladders and 
the only ladder which should have been his quite a few years back according to me but didn't come that is immaterial to so some of the awards he has got particularly the david hume award a dan david award for science of the future given in 2005 is almost equivalent to the nobel prize and we look to all of the people and we have one or the privilege to honor him for getting nobel prize with this few words i would say he is a fantastically unbelievable role model for younger students because these days people think discipline and hard work are not important we should enjoy the life as it is let me tell you discipline and hard work do pay and they have paid extraordinarily well and he is i call a one man army for the growth of science he is a great scientist at the same time a great philanthropist for the country he is so much interested in thinking making young people become scientists and he has written books for science for puc he has written a book himself he goes to high schools he goes to schools and teaches them to do science that is the greatness of cnr he spreads almost in every way as i said difficult to describe from one aspect or the other it is a rare opportunity for the students and a rare opportunity for me to introduce a great friend of mine for whom i have a lot of admiration because i haven't seen in my lifetime another person like him except perhaps the only two i had a fleeting glimpse was vikram sarabhai and baba thank you very much I had the privilege of enjoying the hospitality of Sri Madhuriya Rao. They are excellent couple in the sense, not like the scientists who have got the unfortunate kind of a life. It is a very pleasant life, and I had the pleasure of enjoying the hospitality of Sri Madhuriya Rao. I am really grateful. Both of them have come. Thank you very much. ಈಗ ಒಂದು ಪುಟ್ಟ ವಿರಾಮ ವಿರಾಮದ ನಂತರ ಭಾರತ ರತ್ನ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರ ಸನ್ಮಾನ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ವರದಿಯನ್ನ ಕೇಳುವಿರಿ ಪ್ರಪಂಚವನ್ನೇ ನಿಯಂತ್ರಿಸ ಬಯಸುವವನು ಮೊದಲು ತನ್ನನ್ನು ತಾನು ನಿಯಂತ್ರಣಗೊಳಿಸುವುದನ್ನ ಕಲಿಯಬೇಕಂತೆ ಸಾಕ್ರಿಟಿಸ್ ಧ್ವನಿ ಬಿವಿವಿ ತೊಂಬತ್ತು ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಸಮಾಜದ ಸಮೃದ್ಧಿಗಾಗಿ ಕೆಳುಗ್ರಿ ವಿರಾಮದ ನಂತರ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ಈಗ ಭಾರತ ರತ್ನ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರ ಸನ್ಮಾನ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ವರದಿಯನ್ನ ಕೇಳುವಿರಿ ನಂತರ ಭಾರತ ರತ್ನ ಪುರಸ್ಕೃತ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರನ್ನ ಕೆಎಲ್ಇ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಯ ಚೇರ್ಮನ್ ಡಾ ಪ್ರಭಾಕರ್ ಕೋರಿ ಅವರು ಸತ್ಕರಿಸಿ ಸನ್ಮಾನಿಸಿದರು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರು ವಿಶ್ವ ಪ್ರಸಿದ್ಧ ಭಾರತೀಯ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಿಗಳಲ್ಲೊಬ್ಬರು ಇವರ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಹೆಸರು ಚಿಂತಾಮಣಿ ನಾಗೇಶ್ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ರಾವ್ ಹನುಮಂತ ನಾಗೇಶ್ ರಾವ್ ಮತ್ತು ನಾಗಮ್ಮ ದಂಪತಿಗಳ ಪುತ್ರರಾದ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರು ಹತ್ತೊಂಬತ್ನೂರ ಜೂನ್ ಮೂವತ್ತರಂದು ಬೆಂಗಳೂರಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಜನಿಸಿದರು ಹತ್ತೊಂಬತ್ನೂರ ಐವತ್ತೊಂದರಲ್ಲಿ ಮೈಸೂರು ವಿಶ್ವವಿದ್ಯಾನಿಲಯದಿಂದ ಬಿಎಸ್ಸಿ ಪದವಿಯನ್ನ ಪಡೆದರು ನನ್ನ ಮೇಲೆ ಬಹುವಾಗಿ ಪ್ರಭಾವ ಬೀರಿದವರು ಮಹಾನ್ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಸರ್ ಸಿವಿ ರಾಮನ್ ಅವರು ನನಗಾಗ ಹನ್ನೊಂದು ವರ್ಷ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಕಲಿಯುತ್ತಿದ್ದೆ ಆಗ ಅವರ ಪ್ರಭಾವಕ್ಕೆ ಒಳಗಾದೆ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಕಲಿಯಬೇಕು ಎಂಬ ಕನಸು ಮೂಡಿದ್ದು ಅದೇ ಹೊತ್ತಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಎನ್ನುತ್ತಾರೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಸ್ನಾತಕೋತ್ತರ ಪದವಿಯನ್ನ ಬನಾರಸ್ ಹಿಂದೂ ವಿಶ್ವವಿದ್ಯಾನಿಲಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಹತ್ತೊಂಬತ್ ನೂರ ಐವತ್ ಮೂರರಲ್ಲಿ ಪಡೆದರು ಹತ್ತೊಂಬತ್ ನೂರ ಐವತ್ತೆಂಟರಲ್ಲಿ ಪಾಡ್ಯೂ ವಿಶ್ವವಿದ್ಯಾಲಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಪಿಎಚ್ಡಿ ಪಡೆದ ಅವರು ಹತ್ತೊಂಬತ್ ನೂರ ಐವತ್ತೊಂಬತ್ತರಲ್ಲಿ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರಿನ ಭಾರತೀಯ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಮಂದಿರದಲ್ಲಿ ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸಕರಾಗಿ ಸೇವೆಯನ್ನ ಆರಂಭಿಸಿ ಹತ್ತೊಂಬತ್ ನೂರ ಅರವತ್ ಮೂರರಲ್ಲಿ ಕಾನ್ಪುರದ ಐಐಟಿಗೆ ಸೇರಿದರು ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರು ಪ್ರಸ್ತುತ ಜವಾಹರ್ಲಾಲ್ ನೆಹರು ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಹಾಗೂ ಗೌರವಾಧ್ಯಕ್ಷರಾಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಇವರು ರಸಾಯನಶಾಸ್ತ್ರದ ಸಾಲಿಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಮತ್ತು ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ವಿಭಾಗದ 
ಸಂಶೋಧನೆಗೆ ವಿಶ್ವದಾದ್ಯಂತ ಹೆಸರು ಗಳಿಸಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಪ್ರಧಾನಮಂತ್ರಿಯವರ ವೈಜ್ಞಾನಿಕ ಸಲಹಾ ಮಂಡಳಿಯ ಅಧ್ಯಕ್ಷರಾಗಿಯೂ ಕಾರ್ಯವನ್ನ ನಿರ್ವಹಿಸುತ್ತಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಹಲವಾರು ದ್ವಿಮಿತೀಯ ಕೃತಕ ರಾಸಾಯನಿಕ ವಸ್ತುಗಳನ್ನ ಸಂಯೋಜಿಸುವಲ್ಲಿ ಮಹತ್ವದ ಪಾತ್ರವನ್ನ ವಹಿಸಿದ ಡಾ ಸಿಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರು ಅತಿವಾಹಕ ಸೂಪರ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟಿವಿಟಿ ಹಾಗೂ ನ್ಯಾನೋ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರದಲ್ಲಿ ಅಪಾರ ಸಂಶೋಧನೆ ನಡೆಸಿದ್ದಾರೆ ನಲವತ್ತೆರಡಕ್ಕೂ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ವೈಜ್ಞಾನಿಕ ಪುಸ್ತಕಗಳು ಹಾಗೂ ಸಾವಿರದ ಐದ್ನೂರಕ್ಕೂ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಸಂಶೋಧನಾ ಲೇಖನಗಳನ್ನ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರು ಬರೆದಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಇವರ ಜೊತೆ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಿದ ನೂರ ನಲವತ್ತಕ್ಕೂ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಜನ ಪಿಎಚ್ಡಿ ಪದವಿಯನ್ನು ಗಳಿಸಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರದು ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಕುಟುಂಬ ಇವರ ಪತ್ನಿ ಇಂದುಮತಿ ರಾವ್ ಈ ಹಿಂದೆ ಎಂಇಎಸ್ ಕಾಲೇಜಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕಿಯಾಗಿದ್ದರು ಪ್ರಸ್ತುತ ಇವರು ಜವಾಹರ್ಲಾಲ್ ನೆಹರು ಉನ್ನತ ವೈಜ್ಞಾನಿಕ ಸಂಶೋಧನಾ ಕೇಂದ್ರದಲ್ಲಿ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಆಸಕ್ತಿ ಮೂಡಿಸುವ ಕಾರ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ತೊಡಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಪುತ್ರ ಸಂಜಯ್ ರಾವ್ ಕೂಡ ಜವಾಹರ್ಲಾಲ್ ನೆಹರು ಉನ್ನತ ವೈಜ್ಞಾನಿಕ ಸಂಶೋಧನಾ ಕೇಂದ್ರದಲ್ಲಿ ಕಾರ್ಯವನ್ನು ನಿರ್ವಹಿಸುತ್ತಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಪುತ್ರಿ ಸುಚಿತ್ರ ರಾವ್ ಹಾಗೂ ಅವರ ಪತಿ ಕೆಎನ್ ಗಣೇಶ್ ಪುಣೆಯ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣ ಹಾಗೂ ಸಂಶೋಧನಾ ಕೇಂದ್ರದ ನಿರ್ದೇಶಕರಾಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಭಾರತ ಸರ್ಕಾರವು ಎರಡ್ ಸಾವಿರದ ಹದಿಮೂರರ ನವೆಂಬರ್ ಹದಿನಾರರಂದು ಡಾ ಸಿಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಭಾರತದ ಅತ್ಯುನ್ನತ ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತಿ ಭಾರತ ರತ್ನ ನೀಡಲು ಘೋಷಿಸಿತು ಫೆಬ್ರವರಿ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಎರಡ್ ಸಾವಿರದ ಹದಿನಾಲ್ಕರಂದು ಇವರಿಗೆ ಭಾರತದ ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರಪತಿಯಾದ ಪ್ರಣಬ್ ಮುಖರ್ಜಿ ಅವರು ಭಾರತ ರತ್ನ ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತಿಯನ್ನ ನೀಡಿ ಗೌರವಿಸಿದರು ಹಾಗೂ ಇನ್ನಿತರ ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತಿ ಪುರಸ್ಕಾರಗಳಾದ ಯುನೆಸ್ಕೋ ಪ್ಯಾರಿಸ್ನಿಂದ ಕೊಡಲಾಗುವ ಆಲ್ಬರ್ಟ್ ಐಸ್ಟನ್ ಚಿನ್ನದ ಪದಕ ಪದ್ಮಶ್ರೀ ಹಾಗೂ ಪದ್ಮ ವಿಭೂಷಣ ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತಿ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸರ್ಕಾರದ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ರತ್ನ ಪ್ರಶಸ್ತಿಗೆ ಪಾತ್ರರಾಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಬ್ರಿಟನ್ನಿನ ಆಕ್ಸ್ಫರ್ಡ್ ವಿಶ್ವವಿದ್ಯಾಲಯದ ಎರಡ್ ಸಾವಿರದ ಏಳನೆಯ ಸಾಲಿನ ಗೌರವ ಡಾಕ್ಟರೇಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲದೆ ಮೂವತ್ತೇಳು ಗೌರವ ಡಾಕ್ಟರೇಟ್ ನೀಡಲಾಗಿದೆ ಈಗ ನಮ್ಮ ದೇಶದ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆಯ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಿಯಾದ ಭಾರತ ರತ್ನ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರು ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮವನ್ನ ಉದ್ದೇಶಿಸಿ ಮಾತನಾಡಿದ ಧ್ವನಿ ಮುದ್ರಣವನ್ನ ಕೇಳಿ I'm here accidentally on my way from Bagalcourt. This is the first time I ever went to Bagalcourt to give a lecture to college children there. And also yesterday I gave a talk to uh, the students of uh, the uh, uh, Vishweshwari Institute of Technology. So I came only for that. I'm very glad I'm in Hubli. And this is the first time I'm staying overnight here. Uh, I'm not even staying overnight. I'm on the way to go to the airport after this. Yes. <laughs> But, Uh, I've known the reputation of KIB institutions. They are probably one of the largest and the best educating societies I know of in India. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Dr. Kore is here, who, who is the chairman of the KIB society. Well, I want to say a few words. That I was asked to lay the foundation stone of the Center for Technology uh, and Entrepreneurship. I would like to say a small change in the title of this part of this thing. You see the thing that is important is not entrepreneurship alone but is innovation. That is where India is lacking. I don't know whether you have seen a few months ago they have given the list of all the countries in terms of the excellence in innovation. Out of the 144 countries in the world India has been given a rank of 66 in innovation. Very bad. I feel very sad about that. There are individuals in India who innovate, who do big things in science and other things. But as a country as a whole, they have not done too well. Of course, Britain has not done well either. Many other countries have not done well. But I think we should somehow improve on innovation in a very big way. I think it would be nice if you call this BVB Center for Technology Innovation and Entrepreneurship. The reason I'm telling you is, I'll give an example, in, in, uh, many of you may not know, there are some small countries which got freedom at the same time as India, South Korea is one, South Korea got freedom at the same time as India in 1947, look at South Korea today, because it's a small country, there are fewer problems, they're easy to come up, you may say, but they've also invested a lot in education, science and technology, 
They have big investment, but also they have got major results. They have beaten Japan in, in technology today. In fact, they have gone way ahead of Japan in the electronics industry. Even, for example, all televisions, everything is Samsung. Sony is going gone out almost. It's a terrible thing for Japan. But what is amazing is a country which came up from nothing in 1947, just like India, has now become so competitive. Much of it is because of the tremendous innovative capability of South Korea. A country which has the most innovative technologies and most innovative experience is a little country called Taiwan. What is amazing to me, you know, I've been there several times, Taiwan is a little country which is not worth mentioning. It's such a small country, it's not even as big as Karnataka. But what has happened? The, the number of foundries they have, for example, to make chips, the number of things they do for the entire world is unbelievable. China, you know, is as prosperous, prospered. You know why? Mainly because of the investor of Taiwan, this little country investing in China. There are 3,000 institutions and factories of Taiwan supported in, in technologies in China. That is the thing. How did this little country do so well? They have there one institution called ITRI. When I have visited there, I have gone there many times. It is a, but you know, the, in Taiwan, this institute called ITRI, the, the Institute for Technology Research and Innovation. What is amazing, you know, they train students, they give a degree, I think, I don't know if they give a degree or not. They train them in two years in such a way that most of the 90% of them start their own industry. And that is why Taiwan is what it is. In fact, we have a lot of people who are going to be in the country. They are going to the Karnataka. They are going to Chief Minister, I think he was a very good Chief Minister, and I convinced him that uh, we must do something to establish an institute like a tree in Karnataka. Karnataka not should be in IT. IT is an easy thing. We want to be the highest in technology innovation, and the best in education, technology innovation, and science. Science already Bangalore is the Rajadhani of Vignan, like the Rajadhani of India already. Then nothing can be done about it. Nobody can take away that position of Bangalore. But in innovation, technology innovation, we can easily be solved. He agreed, even even lo located the institution should be in the birthplace of Sarum Vishweshwaraya. It's equal up. Even all that was done, but nothing has happened after that. It's a great pity because I, we sent a team of people from Karnataka to visit Kittri to see how they are doing these things. We should learn the art of creating innovative young people. They seem to know, Taiwan people seem to know. Americans are not that good. Taiwan is somehow of that amazing skill. And I hope that this new center will do something of that type. Think of Italy, maybe you should go to see Italy. It's really whether we from Hubli can produce innovative engineers and scientists. I would not like to give a very like, long lecture, one or two things. Uh, he mentioned something about uh, Baba and uh, Sarabhai. I knew both of them, particularly Sarabhai. So they are very lucky, they are great administrators. They didn't have to do science like me. <laughs> they are very lucky. But for me, it is science that really that is burning me inside all the time. That I, 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 uh, the, the flame of science is something that has led me all this time. And without that, I'll be nobody. If somebody says, you can't do any more science, I do not leave up to it. I mean that. I think I work day and night for a 60 and odd years doing research, of which 55 years I've been a professor and it's been a wonderful life. Science has not let me down and I will not let it down. I think it will be better. ಕೆಲುಗ್ರೇಗ ಒಂದು ಪುಟ್ಟ ವಿರಾಮ ವಿರಾಮದ ನಂತರ ಭಾರತ ರತ್ನ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿ ಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರ ಸನ್ಮಾನ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ವರದಿಯನ್ನ ಕೇಳುವಿರಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸದ್ಗುಣಗಳ ಮೂಲ ಋಷಿ ವಾಕ್ಯ ನೀವು ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀರಾ ಕೆಎಲ್ ಧ್ವನಿ ಬಿವಿವಿ ತೊಂಬತ್ತು ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಎಫ್ಎಂ ಸಮಾಜದ ಸಮೃದ್ಧಿಗಾಗಿ ಕೆಲುಗ್ರಿ ವಿರಾಮದ ನಂತರ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ಈಗ ಭಾರತ ರತ್ನ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿ ಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರ ಸನ್ಮಾನ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ವರದಿಯನ್ನ ಕೇಳುವಿರಿ audience, there are about 1,000 and odd people, today or yesterday also in Belgaum, I was telling them 
as far as I know, I'm the happiest man in the world. I've done, I don't know many people happier than myself because uh, I don't want money, I don't want anything else in life. Doing science itself has been the greatest reward. The ability to discover, the ability to, the ability to find new venues in science, the ability to discover new things, like all the time improving on what you are doing, what you, what, what you are doing the previous day. So every day is a new day because Yesterday is history. Today is going to be a new day where you discover a new thing. So that is how I do myself. I'm not saying that I've done everything under the sun, but I've done my best. In fact, I'm still at the age of 80. I'm working hard and giving a tough time to all these young fellows. <laughs> so there is, very, there is one thing, you know, age has, no, uh, no, no, has, has nothing to do with this. In fact, uh, many of you may not know, there is a, something called the H index in science. H index is a measure of the impact of a person's science in the, on the world in general, world of science. Uh, in India, there are one or two people with index of 50 and so on. Very difficult to get a high H index. Well, my H index is still increasing in every year at my age of 80. And uh, of course, it reached a very high number. I was told the latest number is 113. Uh, and the world, in the world, I think there are only four or five people with this index. So, what is amazing is, one of my friends said, it is not only difficult to have H index, which is very high, very difficult to have H index, but H index minus the age should be a positive number. <laughs> I am, in my case, now that I have crossed 100, I will always be positive in my case. And I want many Indian scientists and engineers to have positive H index, that's my hope. Right now, there is nobody other than myself, I think. <laughs> I'm not talking about myself, but you know, it's agony for me. When I was telling me, Dr. Kori said, you know, I want India to be a great country, a shine as the, one of the top countries in science, top countries in technology, in innovation. We can easily be that. We have all the capabilities. We have young people as bright as anybody, but they are all misled. All the wonderful, brilliant students, you can't imagine the kind of students I've taught in IIT Kanpur, for example, in the early days when I was a professor there. Brilliant! But they are all selling soaps and they are not doing their best in their time. They are not. They are making money. You see, you see that. that I hope you, you in Hubli are all nice people, unlike people in Bangalore. I hope you will not do that. In Bangalore, everybody wants to make money. Bangalore has become a centre for making money. They have lost their soul. Bangalore is a soulless city. I am coming from there. I am telling you. I come from. I am a Bangalorean by birth. I was born 80 years ago in Bangalore. You know, look at Bangalore today. There is no real, no Bangalore student has come to work with me in the last 25 years to do this. <laughs> the only Karnataka students who come from there are outside, from, from outside Bangalore, not from Bangalore. Bangalore people are busy making money, are committing suicides, they are very busy. <laughs> <laughs> so as I was studying as a joke, I was amazed that Bangalore gets first strike. It is the highest number of suicides in India is in Bangalore. <laughs> the two young people. We have driven them mad, I tell you, because giving them, without giving them ideals and ideas. Ideas are important and ideas are important. If without that, we will turn that off, whoever he is. Uh, you know, the, the children of Bangalore are getting lost, I think. I forget about Bangalore. India is getting lost. The ambition of young people person should be to reach the highest level in whatever he wants to do. That is what I mean by climbing the limitless ladder. I, I refer to that in research to science when I wrote my autobiographical book, climbing the limitless ladder. Whether it is spirituality or science, whether it is carpentry or electrical engineering, whether it is any social subject, social, uh, socially relevant subject or technologically relevant subject. Everywhere, it is the excellence that will determine the future of India. Today, the mediocrity that is ruling India Everything, anything that is mediocre, we accept all, just I, we can. It is not, it is not okay, good for me. For me, excellence. I was never a slave driver, he unnecessarily said that. <laughs> was never, but I demand hard work. And every student, good or bad, when they have worked with me, has done very well. It is only after my, they leave me, I don't know, many of them do, don't do much. Some of them don't do much. But by and large, it is very important to demand good work and reward good work. And we have to encourage young people, and that is the main thing. So lastly, I would like to end saying what I said yesterday in Belgaum. The future is with young people. 
but everything for the young people. The future of India is with the young people. My time is over. I will continue to work. That is different. But the young people, we have to make every provision in our society so they shine. Because India is the youngest country today in the world, with an average age of you know, 35 or whatever. In 2050, even 40 years from now, India will be the youngest country. So another 40 years time we have to see that this youth of our India, of our country, contribute to India and make India a great country. And if you don't give them a chance, if senior people become jealous of young people, if senior people don't give an opportunity to the youth, there is no future. I believe that is one thing I do try to do as much as possible to young scientists, young boys and girls whom I know, all over India, not just here. That is one reason my wife and I have devoted 50% of all the awards I've got. I've got a few crores worth of awards, rewards, prizes. Of 50% we have given away as a foundation to support the education of children all over, including in Himalayas. <laughs> we are just building a lecture hall in the Himalayas. Every year in the Himalayas, all the children in the mountains, the, the brightest children in the mountains, all come to this place. We, I take several professors from Bangalore. We give lectures to them every year. In fact, next month we are again doing that. So we do a lot in Kerala. Of course, in Karnataka, we would like to do that. That is, with that purpose, I had come to Bagalcourt and Bragam, talk to young people. See, if we can somehow make sure that our young people deliver, India has taken care of itself. We don't have to do anything. But I was telling the other day, one of my friends, uh, you know, he became a very big man, you know, somewhere in, in the world, with a foremost undergraduate student of mine in IT Kanpur. I told him, 10% or even 20% or 10% of the brightest students whom we taught in IITs, IITs, I'm saying because you may not know, 20, 30 years ago, the kind of students who used to get IIT were brilliant. Today, it is not the case. Slight degeneration in IIT. And those students, if they work for India, India would be different. You know, look at 50% of computers in America is Indian. The, the other day, I was going in a plane about two years ago in America. This year, when some nicely dressed man, Indian, Indian looking, he said, Sir, how are you? I was in an ordinary club. Come to the first class. You know, why are you sitting here? Said, no, no, I have only an ordinary economic. No, sir, you please come first, first man. I didn't say, who are you? I don't know. Don't you remember? You taught me in the undergraduate. I'm the president of this air company. I, you know, this is the kind of thing. The, the other day I found Accenture in India. The president, chairman of this one, a former undergraduate. All these guys are working for all kinds of companies, making rich other companies rich, foreign companies even richer, and India is losing their money. I think we should do something. India should capitalize on the youth. And youth also should not be irresponsible, thinking you know they have a good time and do the minimum work required by, by them. They should do the maximum work that is not demanded of them. It is just like in a school. The role of a teacher is not to teach you what's in the book. That's something that more that is more than what is in the book. Exactly like that. Do what is not required of you. And it is that that will save India. I hope this in society, this college, and this new center will contribute to the future of India. And that will be the wonderful day when I can see India as a great country in science, technology, and innovation. Thank you. Kilugriga Vandu Putta Virama. Virama Dhanantara Bharata Ratna Dr. C.N.R. Ravavara Sanmana Karakramada Varadiyanna Kiluviri. Benki in the Para Davanu Visilinelli Vanagudilla Bharati Yagade. ಕೆಳುಗ್ರಿ ವಿರಾಮದ ನಂತರ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ಈಗ ಭಾರತ ರತ್ನ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿ ಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರ ಸನ್ಮಾನ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ವರದಿಯನ್ನ ಕೇಳುವಿರಿ ನಂತರ ಕೆಎಲ್ಇ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಯ ಚೇರ್ಮನ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಪ್ರಭಾಕರ್ ಕೋರೆ ಅವರು ಕೆಎಲ್ಇ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇದೊಂದು ಐತಿಹಾಸಿಕ ಸಮಾರಂಭ ಭಾರತ ರತ್ನ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿ ಎನ್ ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರ ಆಗಮನದಿಂದ ಕೆಎಲ್ಇ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಪಾವನವಾಯಿತು ಎನ್ನುತ್ತಾ ಈ ರೀತಿ ಮಾತನಾಡಿದರು ಇವತ್ತು ಕೆಎಲ್ಇ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಐತಿಹಾಸಿಕ ಸಮಾರಂಭ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸುಪುತ್ರ ಭಾರತ ರತ್ನ ರಾವ್ ಅವರು ನಮ್ಮ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಬರ್ತಾರಂದ್ರೆ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಪವಿತ್ರ ಆಗಿಬಿಟ್ಟದೆ ನಾನು ಅವ್ರ ಮಾತು ಕೇಳಿ 
बहुतेक राजकीय युद्ध अयोग्य जन नमन नो अभिमान देश सल अभिमान देश युवक टाइम हण गोदे ना बहुत वैयक्तिक बहुत नमेंगे उपदेश बहुत आनंद सर ऐम वेरी प्रौड एंड रिडे एक्सट्रीमली प्रौड That I am sitting next to you, this lady. Of course, Kale is doing very small work. Of course, he appreciated. I don't know whether you know that this institution is established by seven great teachers, not by any industrialist. And and today we respect same thing in teachers in my institution. And very much democracy set up, sir. Of course, we are only we feel that we have not produced like Rao. In land last 98 years that we I feel still I feel very sorry but anyway sir uh, you talk about Karnataka I am very proud but uh, northern Karnataka sir people are different why don't you little time we give it to northern Karnataka there is so many stories sir but nicer people thank you very much sir. thank you sir I am very thrilled that. I don't want to say thank you, sir. Thank you, behalf of my institution. Thank you, behalf of my students, staff of Kail University. Uh, we'll see oftenly in Hubli, Belagam, and this part of uh, Karnataka. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam. Professor B. L. Desai Yavara, Vandan Arpani Yondi ke kare krama mukta evai to. Good evening to all of you. Certainly, all of us feel blessed on this historic occasion. Our heartfelt thanks to our great visionary chairman, Dr. Prabhakar Kore, who has taken Kail Society from 36 institutions to 240 institutions in 25 years. Thanks a lot to our mentor and guide, Professor M. I. Saudati, Professor. former vice chancellor bangalore university and former ugc member for the wonderful networking profound thanks to dr shu prasad from the jawaharlal nehru center for advanced research and professor ayachit for the great support thanks a lot to sri mv karmari office bearers president of the alumni association office bearers and donors from the alumni association for making the building for the center for technology entrepreneurship now going to be renamed as the center for innovation and entrepreneurship a reality <laughs> special thanks to our secretary cr students and staff thanks a lot to all the invitees press and media and to all those who have made this program possible let us all thank bharat ratna professor cna rao and mrs indumathi rao by giving them a standing ovation ಇದುವರೆಗೂ ಹುಬ್ಬಳ್ಳಿಯ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆಯ ಬಿವಿಪಿ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಲೇಜಿಗೆ ಆಗಮಿಸಿದ್ದ ನಮ್ಮ ದೇಶದ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆಯ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಭಾರತ ರತ್ನ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಎನ್ಆರ್ ರಾವ್ ಅವರ ಸನ್ಮಾನ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ವರದಿಯನ್ನ ಕೇಳಿದಿರಿ ಇದು ಕೆಎಲ್ಲಿ ಧ್ವನಿ ಬಿವಿಬಿ ತೊಂಬತ್ತು ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಎಫ್ಎಂ ಸ